Well, CRISPR is an acronym that actually represents a sequence of DNA letters in the, in the genomes of cells. It, it's found in bacteria. And it it's, uh, was interesting to scientists originally because it's a bacterial immune system, a way that bacteria can fight viral infection. But the, the uh, CRISPR acronym has now become widespread in the media as, a, as a, uh, an indication of a new technology for gene editing. And the story of how an adaptive immune system in bacteria was harnessed as a technology for gene editing is really part of what uh, a crack in creation is about. So the CRISPR gene editing technology is a tool that scientists can use to change the letters of DNA in cells in precise ways. So I like to use the analogy of a, a word processor on, on our computer. So we have a document, you can think about the DNA in a cell like the text of a document that has the instructions to uh, tell the cell how to grow and divide and become a brain cell or a liver cell or develop into an entire organism. And it, just like in a document, uh, the CRISPR technology gives scientists a way to go in and edit the letters of DNA, just like we might cut and paste uh, text in our, in our document or uh, replace whole sentences, even, even whole paragraphs or chapters. We can now do that uh, using the CRISPR technology in the DNA of cells. So when we think about a, a technology that allows precise changes to DNA to be made, um, you know, for scientists, this is sort of a, you know, a, um, uh, really a gift that allows uh, research to proceed very quickly in terms of understanding the genetics of cells and organisms, but also provides a very practical way to solve problems. And I, I, there's, a, there's a many that we could discuss, but I'll, I'll mention a couple that I think are particularly exciting. So in, in uh, clinical medicine, the opportunity to make changes to blood cells that would cure diseases like sickle cell anemia, a disease where uh, you know, we've understood the genetic cause for a long time, but until now there hasn't been a way to actually uh, think about treating patients. And now with this technology, it's possible in principle to remove stem cells that give rise to blood cells in a person's body, make edits to those cells that would correct the mutation causing uh, sickle cell disease, and then replace those cells to essentially give a patient uh, a, new, a new set of cells that don't have the defect. So I think that's very exciting, and there are, are multiple uh, research groups right now working on doing just that. So I think that's a uh, future, you know, probably sometime in the next two to five years, we will see clinical trials in that area, and uh, we hope uh, real progress towards curing that disease. Um, but there's an, you know, an another example that I think is also very, uh, potentially very impactful clinically, but is, has a very different kind of uh, strategy, is the idea of making edits to pigs to create animals that are going to be better uh, organ donors for humans. And so pigs are already of interest for, for organ donation, but imagine that we could make edits to uh, the DNA of pigs to make their organs more human-like and also to remove any viruses from pig cells that might otherwise infect a patient. And those are both things that are actively uh, uh, underway using the CRISPR technology. Um, and then a third area that I think is interesting to think about from the perspective of global impact in disease is thinking about using gene editing not to, uh, not to change the DNA in people per se, but actually to affect the kinds of insects that transmit disease to people. And the idea here is that one could use a gene editor to create mosquitoes that would be unable to transmit uh, viruses like dengue virus or Zika virus by uh, using a, a technique called gene drive that allows traits to be spread very quickly through a population using an efficient way of gene editing such as the, the CRISPR tool. And I think that's an opportunity that you know, could have very big uh, impact in, in terms of uh, global health, but also requires obviously some you know, very thorough vetting and uh, discussion about potential environmental impact. I, I think one of the, the aspects of, of this technology that's been 
very interesting to me personally is my own kind of personal growth uh, through the last few years. I think that, you know, when I started this research project, which actually began uh, now almost 10 years ago in the, in the lab, we were certainly not thinking about uh, technology that would allow alteration of, of, of human evolution or anything of that nature. And over the last uh, few years, when, as this technology has begun to uh, be deployed globally in different, uh, for different applications, I've found that I've gone from, you know, thinking about it initially just with, you know, sort of almost, uh, you know, wide-eyed excitement, thinking about all the opportunities that this offers, to realizing that, you know, there was real risk and that, that we really needed, we meaning the scientific community and really, frankly, the, the human community needed to be aware of this and discussing it. And one of the things that, that sort of brought that to the forefront of my mind was a dream that I had uh, fairly early on in which I was, uh, you know, I walked into a room and a, a colleague of mine said to me, uh, Jennifer, I'd like you to explain the CRISPR technology to a friend. And he brought me into a room and uh, there, a person was uh, sitting with their back to me. And as they turned around, I realized with sort of a hor hor horror that it was, it was Hitler. And it was actually Hitler with a sort of a pig nose and it almost looked like a chimeric pig human uh, sort of sort of creature. Uh, and it was, it was, you know, it sounds funny in a way to relate that image, but it w in the dream it was a terrifying thing. And I, I really felt real just, you know, stone cold fear in the dream and, and sort of woke up from that dream with a start and, and realized, you know, kind of had this initial feeling of what, what have I done, you know. And <laughs> And that was really one of the things that, that, uh, that, that motivated me to, you know, to get out of the lab and start talking to people more broadly about the technology, about its capabilities, about the great things about it, but also about things that really required uh, really uh, deep thought and, and careful uh, consideration and regulation.